down my shooting iron, I'm going hunting. Fetch me down my trusty 45. See the fire in my eye, watch the smoke when I go by. Fetch me down my trusty 45. I used to call my cows with a whistle. I used to call my dog with a horn. Harmonic is the thing to wake the chicken. Let the rooster sleep till late at morn. Fetch me down my shooting iron, I'm going hunting. Fetch me down my trusty 45. See the fire in my eye, watch the smoke when I go by. Fetch me down my trusty 45. What's going on, friends? Yeah, it's your old pal Jack Hammer Mike with another lame video. Coyote 101. I'm going to start a series on my journey to Coyote, I don't know, the Coyote Slaughter. <laughs> <coughs> That's what everybody calls it. That's what everybody wants to do. Um, I'm in the middle of private property. State trust land right here behind me. Look how beautiful that is. Quiet. I don't even need a dead cat today on the mic. There's really no wind to speak of. Um. <coughs> I'm going to, when I built that 308, the bone crusher, um, I built it specifically for this. I got the M4 out today because it's just lightweight, doing a lot of walking uh, with this Vortex Optic on it, the Strike Eagle. I, it shoots well. I can shoot to 300 yards easy with this without having to turn any dials because it's got bullet drop compensation in here. Uh, anyway, this is kind of my journey. I've been to uh, three stands previously. I'm heading to a fourth one right now. It's taken about an hour per stand to scope out the area, um, see if it's got access, sit and listen for gunshots. I don't hear any. Um, I don't hear any coyote calls. <coughs> I don't hear any coyotes. I haven't seen shit for rabbits. One just took off into this tree when I pulled up. But that's it. Um, no rabbit out here to speak of. And there's fields everywhere. There's alfalfa growing all over the place. Different kinds of hay, I guess. And all kinds of different crops. So you'd think that they would have a excellent source of food. There's all kinds of water out here. You know, they're irrigating all the crops and stuff. I've got miles, guys. I have probably a five to ten square mile area of ag. They call it ag short term for you coyote experts. Uh, yeah, there's about five square miles, ten square miles of it, which goes uh, between state trust and private property. You can't go on private property unless you get permission. Onyx Maps is something I'm using. They uh, have the names of people that own these properties. A lot of them are trusts and things. They're just investments, I'm sure. But we might be able to get a hold of them and uh, get permission to go on their areas and uh, see if we can get any coyotes. They, uh, there's a lot of cattle out here. A lot of cattle. Um, the ranchers definitely want the coyotes done. They're going to be, it's the last week of January.
2022. God, I can't fucking, November can't come fast enough, guys. <laughs> fucking Biden potato head. What must be what? What must be what? What must be what? Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, the, the last week of this, uh, January, February, and, or, you know, the early spring, cow, or cows are going to calve. So, there are going to be a lot of babies born, a lot, a lot of potential coyote food, and we can't have that. That's Angus beef. <laughs> I don't, don't want that going and getting eaten up. Neither do the, the ranchers. So they don't give a shit if you're out here on their land shooting. You just have to obey the signs. If the gate's closed, keep it closed. If it's open, keep it open. Um, if it says you shut the gate, like the one I just showed you, or the one I just saw, I've got some other video. I'm going to have to like splice it in together. Anyway, um, you know, do what the gates say. It says no trespassing. Go that way. Don't trespass. However, state trust land, and I said, if it's private property, forget about it. If state trust land is going to have those signs. No trespassing, no shooting, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's uh, fine and dandy, but if you have a hunting license, you're welcome to go on there. You don't need any kind of uh, permit or anything for uh, state trust land. You don't need any of that. So, as long as you got a hunting license, a valid one, you're golden. So, we'll be doing more and more. I'm waiting for a call right now. Um, an e-caller from uh, Lucky Duck. Uh, probably supposedly supposed to be in at the end of uh, January. Which, you know, how everybody is right now. They're... Uh, Empty shelves, fucking back up in the harbors, ports, whatever. Thanks, Biden, you fuckhead. Um, I didn't say that, did I? Out loud? Whoops. Anyway, uh, you want to be camoed as much as possible. Uh, I'm learning about scent blockers, trying to anyway. It doesn't look like anybody uses them, but I don't know. I don't know if I need to or not. I haven't really seen anybody use them. So, other than that, it's gonna be a learning experience. Like I said, I built the 308 for it. Named it the Bone Crusher. She's a beautiful piece of work. Oh, I also got a- We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. I don't know if I'll do much hunting with this. It's going to depend on how much walking I have. Most of these stands that we're going to be doing, not going to have to walk very far. So, you know, size and weight constraints, guys. I can use a 308. Uh, have an extra mag. You know, 20 rounds is more than enough. But uh, sometimes you'll catch them running. You might want to pop them. You know, it's just fun target practice and all. So... I'll have a couple extra mags or an extra mag, 40 rounds. It's a lot of weight. That's two pounds a piece. <laughs> That's a lot of weight for a 20 round mag loaded with 308. So, Bone Crusher is going to be going out here soon. Haven't painted her yet. Um, what else? Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you just got to remember that you're dealing with dogs canines okay canines are one are extremely smart and two they have a fantastic sense of smell obviously because they use them for tracking and stuff so when you go out and set your collar out every step you take is knocking scent off and when they get up in there they're going to be able to smell it so wind direction is very very critical to uh, where you want to shoot I'm also finding that, you know, you can start a row or, you know, a bunch of sets, try to start at the head 
uh, into the wind so that you know every stand you go to the wind is blowing in your face and then you're shooting out that way you know so that coyotes don't latch on to that scent I'm in a really good spot in this agricultural valley because they're used to vehicle traffic so when a truck my truck comes in you know or I've got a buddy at work that's into it and he uh, flaked on me today but He's going to be doing most of the driving, but when we drive into a spot, a stand, they're, they're not going to really freak because they're here in a vehicle. You know, this isn't all that isolated out here. Uh, lots of water, again, lots of food, rodents, there's hay bales, and stacks and stacks of hay all over the place out here. You know, there's a lot of cattle, a lot of horses. This is a great spot. This is a great spot. And again, Sunday, two o'clock in the afternoon right now. Heard heard really any gunshots. Not like there's a bunch of hunters or anything out here. So, you know, and again, with state trust land, you can't target practice, you can only hunt. You, they don't want you target practicing. They don't want you multiple shots and blah, blah, blah. They're very strict on that. No target practice. So, you know, anybody that shoots out here is going to shoot what they have to shoot in order to down whatever it is they're doing it. So I might have had people shooting, and, and while I was driving, I couldn't hear it. So, anyway, that's Coyote 101, part one, episode one, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, I got a couple of spots to look at. Still, I'm on my way over there, and I just happened to see this beautiful shot right here, so figured I'd get some pictures in. And uh, I'm out. <laughs>